Is there anything else, Mr. Woodbury? No. Just send Mr. Putnam in. Oh. These are the letters you dictated this morning, sir. Any messages? Mr. Hedges telephoned. He asked me to inform you they'd made the change you ordered in your personal papers. Yes, yes, and I will. Anything else? Why, a telephone call. That sir. same man? Yes, sir. What did he say this time? He said he was an old friend. When I told him he wouldn't be home, he said he'd take a chance on finding you in this afternoon. Don't you think I should notify the police? No. Or... No. Where's Mr. Anthony? Your son is playing polo at the West Fall Hunt Club, sir. Yes, yes, I remember. Anything else? Uh, let me see. No, I guess not. Oh, by the way, uh, say what you can do, Putnam. Better run into the city and get those papers from Hedges. And bring Hedges back with you. I may need them. Yes, sir. Mr. Woodbury, I believe. Bill Drew, I thought so. So you're Thomas Woodbury. No wonder it took me 25 years to find John Barr. I suppose you know why I'm here. That's the boy. Fine-looking man. You've done pretty well by him. Looks like his mother. Too bad she passed away so young. She'd been mighty proud of him. She was a fine woman. She was, that. Well? Oh, yes, of course. I almost forgot what I come for. Funny, isn't it, I should forget now. After thinking of nothing else for all these years. How did it happen? We don't know, Tony. In there. Doctor, isn't there anything Nothing, you... Tony. I'm sorry. You see, it must have been instantaneous. Through the heart. I 
to do. Now then, let's see what's here. Apparently, Father had this man Drew under surveillance for 25 years. Yes. We well, was notified the police at once. Oh, no. Well, whatever all this means, it's evident that Dad didn't want anyone else in on it. As much as I hate to find a skeleton in the family closet, I... I don't want to start an investigation that might reflect on his good name. But well, what can you do about it? I'm going out to Wyoming and look up this man Drew. I have an idea he knows something about this. May prove a dangerous adventure. There's no time to consider that. Yes, but tell me, don't you see that if you... I'm uh, sorry, I've made up my mind. Well, I guess you know best, son, but keep me advised of everything. And remember, I'm here to back you up. Thanks, old boy. Don't forget the old smile and keep that chin up. Okay, tell me. I beg your pardon. Will you please get out of here? Sorry, I want to apologize. I, I wish you'd get out of here. Please accept my apology. I had a forced landing. I... Will you go out of here? Oh, get out of here. I'm quickly. leaving now. Oh. Anybody hurt? Anybody hurt? Hey, what's happened? Anybody hurt? Jerry. Gosh, where's Jerry? Jerry? That's Foster. Oh, if you mean the young lady whose bathroom I just flew into, she was okay when I saw her last. Except. She was a little surprised. Hey, Sheriff, watch this guy. I'm going... Wait a minute, old man. Give the girl a chance. Are you the aviator? Well, I was. Don't you know there's a law against flying low over Eldera? One of those smart stunt flyers, eh? I was trying to make a landing and lost control. Why don't you try to learn how to fly? Gentlemen, I'm sorry I crashed in the building, but I'm ready to pay for any damage I've done. Yeah? Well, you better not try to leave this town until you do. Are you the owner? No, I'm not. But Fox is a friend of mine. And she's perfectly able to take care of her own affairs. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you're not hurt, Jerry. I was just trying to help you. Thanks, Steve. 
May I assure you, Miss Foster, that I'll gladly pay for any damage I've done? Well, now, see here. Just a minute, Sheriff. I think this little matter can be settled out, of course. He doesn't look like a hit-and-run flyer to me. Thank you, boys. Come on, Butch. You better make sure he can pay better than he can fly. I can't tell you, Miss Forster, how happy I am that you weren't hurt. That's very thoughtful of you. Nice place you have here. I'm glad you want it. Have you any of those Indian good luck rings? Yes, with some very nice ones. Four ladies? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, blonde or brunette? Brunette. Brunette? Yes. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> and don't forget, Kitty, if you ever come to New York, be sure to look me up. Oh, yeah? Why? So I can show you the town, big boy? Well, I bet you could have that. He hasn't ever been any further east than Omaha. That big shot. Three sixes. Not that it matters, Steve. But would you mind telling me if you're trying to give me the runaround? What's the idea? Nothing. Only I saw you dancing with Jerry Foster last night. You're not putting anything over on little Kitty. Oh, far be it for me, the two-time a lady like you. Well, if you're as smart as you've been trying to make me believe you are, you won't trifle with my pure girlish affection. Well, are you going to put it down? So that's the handsome aviator who flew in from the east and into the bath of the golden-haired princess. Oh, you ain't so smart. Well, big fella. That's further than you ever got with it. Who do you take it so hard, Stevie? Everything all right, Mr. Bard? Fine. That bath was as welcome as it was needed. You know a man named Drew living around here? He's a rancher, I think. Oh, yeah. Bill Drew. He's got a big ranch over at Elk Lake. That's about 20 miles across that range. Do you think he's there now? Don't know whether he's back yet or not. There's his foreman, Steve Nash. He ought to... Hey, Steve. Yeah? Your boss back yet? Why, who wants to know? Why, Mr. Bard here was just inquired. Yes, I was just asking. Well, Mr. Him. Drew's down to El Paso. Anything I can do for you? No, thanks. I may look him up when he returns. Oh, yeah? Cattle business? No. I'll tell him you were asking for him. Oh, you needn't mind. Where can I send a telegram? Well, right down to the railroad station. Shall we telephone for you? No, thanks. I'll walk down. You're not so hot at cross-examination, are you? Maybe I'm not so dumb. A fellow doesn't drop into a town like this and ask questions for nothing. Not about Bill Drew, anyway. this morning. <laughs> Suppose you'll be going back to New York with us, eh? Oh, maybe. If I can't get the ship fixed. Guess traffic's pretty light now going east. Don't suppose you sell many tickets to New York. That'll be 92 cents. Oh, I sell one once in a while. Sold one to Bill Drew just a few weeks ago. Drew's a pretty big man around here, isn't he? Yes, he is that. Been looking for him back for some time now. Friend of yours? Oh, not particularly. Be over at the palace for a few days if anything comes for me. Bard's the name. All right, Mr. Bard. Anything for me today, Joe? Not a thing, Steve. When do you expect the boss back? Oh, almost any day now. I thought there might be a wire for me here today. 
Say, uh, that New York fella wiring for a new plane? No. Guess he'll be going back with us. Oh, I see. Wasn't about Drew he was sending that wire, was it? Can't say, Steve. Company business. Okay. Just forget that I asked you, will you? I'd like to get rid of them horses before your boss gets back. I don't want to take any chances. Yeah, you're right. Drew's coming back any day now, and we got to get him out of here. Did you hear anything more about that trip, Steve? Nothing except what I told you. Instead of coming here from New York, he's going down to El Paso and stay there for a couple of weeks. Kind of mysterious, ain't he? Well, I guess what he does is his own business. Yeah. I guess he'll get along all right without you worrying about him. Well, will you look who's coming? Huh. Looks like your little pal wants to go bye-bye on horsey. <laughs> Say, Butch, yeah. slip him Lord Fauntleroy over there. You're on, Steve. I ain't had a good laugh in a week. <laughs> How do you do? Chance of getting a horse here? We don't rent horses, mister. I'd like to buy one. I'd like to see some of the country around here. Oh, well, I ain't got none myself, but Mr. Nash here has a couple to sell. Ain't you, Steve? Well, I'm... I might sell little Lord Fauntleroy over there if you want a real horse. Some horse. Come on, I'll show him to you. Not exactly a family pet, is he? Well, of course, if you want a rocking horse. Do you mind if I try him? No. Help yourself, mister. Throw a saddle on him, Butch. Sure. <laughs> You any kin folks? Where do you want the body sent? It's all yours, mister. Thanks. He was only playing with you. Oh, was that it? <laughs> Maybe we'd better find one that's more gentle. You know, Fauntleroy's no ladies, Mom. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but I'd like to try him again. Oh, you wouldn't like to get those nice new panties all ruined, would you, Misty? What do you want from him? 200? Isn't that pretty steep? Take it a look. How do you do, Mr. Bard? Oh, hello there. Hello, Nash. Thanks again for that horse. Well, Stevie, he still looks pretty good to me. Better go down and give Butch the once over. Ah, go chase yourself. Where is it, Lawler? Here's Nash now, Mr. Drew. Yes? You asked me to tell you what he can't. All right. Catch him lunch, boss. Not now, Warren. Don't catch him lunch. You catch him barely egg. After a while, maybe. Come in, Steve. Glad to see you back, boss. I've been looking for you. 
Sit down. Thanks. Everything all right? Yes, sir. You must have been mighty sick down there in El Paso. That last shipment of steers get away okay? Yeah, checks in the First National. Any other news? Well, yeah. Well, what is it? Trains are in town making inquiries about you. Yes? Yeah, he's registered at the palace as Anthony Bard. Anthony Bard. What's unusual about that? Strangers often come here to talk business with me, don't they? Well, yes, sir, but... But what? His name isn't Bard. Hmm. How come, Steve? Turning detective? He's looking at the arrested, boss. Well, as they say in court, proceed. What is his name? His name's Woodbury. Anthony Woodbury. Anthony Woodbury. How do you know that? That's the same guy. Do you mind if I keep this? Okay, boy. Anything I can do? What can you do? Well, you know me, boss. If you want to get rid of this, who do I want to get rid of? Who am I afraid of? Oh, I kind of thought maybe this fellow boss. Well, you thought wrong. Forget it. Yes, sir. Steve. Yes, sir? Would you like to make a thousand dollars? What do you want me to do, boy? Get this fellow Bard or Woodbury here to the ranch. I'll get him. And remember, I want him here unharmed. You understand? Oh, sure, boy. Well, I thought maybe you didn't. Steve, I know a lot of things about you and Butch Morgan. What do you mean? Don't try to put anything over on me. Now, do you want that thousand? I'll get him for you. Terribly. Sorry. Yes, I know. I heard you the first time. Yesterday, I believe it was. But my horse shied. I yes, could... first you crashed into my bathroom, and then you wrecked my auto. Oh, then, Miss Foster, I can't tell you how sorry I was, or am. Well, don't try so hard, then. Better make yourself useful and see what damage you've done this time. Oh, just one tire that's a little flat. Just flat on the bottom, I suppose. Oh, but Miss... Miss... Will you stop apologizing and get busy? Yes, Miss Foster. That is, if you can be useful as well as ornamental. Go on, I got it coming to me. If you do a good job of this, I might recommend you for a position at the uh, Eldera Garage. That is, if you expect to remain here permanently. Well, that ought to be a grand reason for staying. What is? You're recommending me. Well, I might change my mind. Oh, please don't. Well, I'll think about it. There now, wasn't that a snappy job? Do I get the recommendation? Of course, I'll have to see your references first. Well, then I guess I don't get it. Why? What were you fired for? Well, you see, I fell in love with the boss's daughter. And one day, while I was digging on a nice new sewer job, he... Oh, do you mind finishing your memoirs on paper? You might send me a copy. Jerry, uh, Miss Foster, would you please be serious for just a minute? Don't you think you've given me enough to be serious about? Well, I know. I'll never forgive myself. And I'm not sorry. Well, I like that, Mr. Mann. 
Listen, will you wait just a minute while I get my horse? What's the idea? I'll be right there. You know, Jerry, I'll never forget the first time I saw you. We'll dispense with reference to that meeting, if you please. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Oh, yes, I did. Steady, Fauntleroy.
wanted to tell you that Drew got back. Yeah? Yeah. Where is he? He's out at the ranch. I'm going out there tonight. I thought maybe you'd like to go along. Yes, I'd like to. Fine. We'll meet at the corral in 15 minutes. The corral? Yeah. We're gonna ride. You know, it's shorter over the trail. Okay, I'll be there. Okay, wait a minute. If you're gonna change your clothes, you'd better hurry. I'll tell Jerry you'll be back to say goodbye. Thanks. Oh, uh, my boss told me to tell you he had to leave town for a few days. Asked me to say goodbye to you for him. Well, what happened? Well, I, I kind of think that's for him to explain, don't you? Now, okay, listen, Jerry, why can't you oh, and I... Oh, Steve, let's not go all over that again. I'm going home. Can I take you? No, thanks. Good night. So she gave you the air again, huh? Now, wait a minute. Don't you know when you get the gate? Say, listen, you, if you know so much, consider yourself given the air. Now, what do you think of that? Just this. idea. Well, we better rest the horses here for a few minutes. We can get a drink of water, too. Well, how far from here? Oh, about an hour or more. But she's pretty rough country. Who's here? If I'd have known you was coming, I'd have baked a gooseberry pie. <laughs> Put him up. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? You wanted to see Drew, didn't you? Then yeah, you'll be sorry you ever did. That remains to be seen, gentlemen. Yeah, well, you done. Now, what'd you do that for? Uh, well, I told you I had a few things to settle with that guy, didn't I? Yeah, but... Uh, you said Drew wanted them delivered all tied up, didn't you? <laughs> there he is. young guy with a lot of coin dropped into a small berth and fell for a little dame. She ran a bookstore. And then? Oh, of course, there was a villain who also had a lean in toward this dame. So one night he takes Mr. Hero for a ride over the hills. Yes, ma'am. 
Took him for a ride, as they say in the classics. You mean Steve and I should take a movie bar somewhere? Yes, the Drew's Ranch. But what's the... I don't know what the game is, but Butch Morgan's in one. And you know Bill Drew, in spite of his soft-spoken manners, no sissy. What can I do? Couldn't say, baby. Let your conscience be your guide. Thank you very much, Miss Carroll. I'll be seeing you. The star dreamers aren't we all? Hey, Butch, can't you put on a new record? Oh, it's a matter, don't you appreciate good music? Oh, is that what it was? I thought you was trying to scare the mountain lion. Well, what do you think of this? I am the words, and you are the melody. But we need the two to make the song of rock. Hey, what the? Don't you, Butch? Come on, get him. Get on it. You dirty. Looks like he got away, Butch. Yeah, and I'll get him up the last thing I ever do. I'm going back to the ranch and tell Drew he got away. didn't bring him then. We were bringing him, Butch Morgan and me. And Butch Morgan? What was the idea of that? Well, I, I saw enough of him at Odara to realize that I'd be foolish to tackle the job alone. Yes? Yeah. We were giving the horses a rest at the sheep herder shack when all of a sudden he jumps the two of us. Knocks Butch down and hits me in the head with his gun. Down onto his horse and beats it. And he got away. <laughs> well, all I can say is you're a fine pair. Well, say, boss, that guy's a tough customer. Yeah. Yeah. We'd have got him, though, if he hadn't jumped his horse over Devil's Gulf. Jumped his horse over Devil's Gulf? Yeah, near the divide. And emptied his gun at us and creased Butch's head. Maybe I'd better take some of the boys and go after him. Never mind. I'll handle this matter myself from now on. Comes down. I knew it. Find Lawler for me. Hurry. Lawler. 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 Hey, boss. Lawler, I've got a job for you to do. Yes, sir. Any of the boys around? Five or six. I'll get them. Yes, sir. Hey, boys! Oh, I thought this Drew 
Drew's ranch? Nothing else but. Is Mr. Drew here? I suppose he is. Thanks. Come in. Where is Mr. Drew? I guess I'm here, man. What can I do for you? There's a matter I'd like to discuss with you. Privately. All right, boys. Won't you sit down? I prefer to stand. Well, maybe you'll tell me your business. Don't you know? Why should I? Well, I didn't suppose your foreman was acting for himself when he almost had me killed last night. Why should any man of mine try to harm you? Well, I have a good reason to believe that a man named William Drew knows something about the killing of my father. Hey, are you trying to accuse me of something? I'm not trying to accuse you of anything. Well, you better not. should have thought as much. I am William Drew. You can go, Lord. Tony, please. Please, Jerry, stand back. I'm not armed. You were the man with my father the day I came home to find him murdered, weren't you? I was with Thomas Woodbury that day. He was not murdered. You'd have a hard time proving that, wouldn't you? Perhaps. Well, you're going to get a chance to do it. I don't think so. Why not? After you hear what I have to say. But! What's this? Who's got it? Boy, what happened? Get a doctor, quick! Morgan shot Mr. Drew. After him, boy, focus! Catch him, water, boss. No, not now, one. All right. 
How was that, Mr. Drew? Hmm. That's fine. The boys have gone for a doctor. Oh, never mind the doctor. Everything's all right now. That was a fine thing you did. But I can't understand why you did it. I didn't kill your... Thomas Woodbury. I admit I went there that day for a reckoning. But why? He knew why and went for his gun. I grabbed his hand. The gun went off. Yes? Twenty-five years ago, John Bard took the name of Thomas Woodbury to escape me. We'd been friends for years. We both loved the same woman. She married me and we had a child. Yes? Then he took her away from me and... You mean that my father... He was not your father. I see. You are. My boy, I'm... I'm not asking anything from you. I knew that was impossible when I wanted you brought here. I did that to keep you from doing something rash. I understand. Now? I wanted you to know the truth about everything. Twenty-five years is a long time to go without seeing you. Well, taking everything into consideration, I'm... I'm so proud of my son, I... I'd be almost willing to cash in now. Oh, but you're not going to go now. Hmm. Not a fine old buckaroo like Bill Drew. Oh, well, maybe sometime you and Jerry here will come out and visit the old man, eh? Shall we, Jerry? <laughs> 